All right. At this point, everybody should have managed to get themselves a learning locker set up. And we'll just go through quickly what an organization is and what a store is inside an organization. So an organization is what I would log into. It's a uh, it groups all of my statements, it groups my users, um, it groups all of my extra persona data and my visualizations and my dashboards. So I've made a new organization for the purpose of this demo, called it MOOC demo. And under that organization, I will have multiple stores. So if the organization is um, a building with all of your stuff inside it, the stores are the individual rooms and statements go into a specific store. So before we can add any statements to this organization, we'll have to add a new store. I can make as many stores as I want, and I can use them to logically divide statements, or for security purposes. So let's give this one a name. Uh, I'll call it master. This is my main store. I'm going to put all of my statements in here. You don't have to have multiple stores. If you just want a single store, that is fine. Uh, when I create a new store, it should also create a client. So clients are used for accessing Learning Locker's APIs. Uh, we'll give this one another name. And clients have access to only a single store, not the entire organization. So because I've this one was automatically created from making a store, it's already attached to my master store. But if I wanted to put use this to put statements into a different store, I would have to change that. Uh, it also has the XAPI all scope, which means that it can input statements and it can read statements and access the other APIs, the state and profiles API. Again, it can only read and write statements to that single store that it's attached to, not no others. We've also got a few other options. Uh, we've got the authority, which this client represents. So the authority would be the application, mostly. So if I was using this client to send statements from curator, I would call the authority curator and maybe use hello at curator.com. This is optional. Uh, some applications will overwrite this, even if you set it. Now I have that, I also get a key and a secret. So the key is the username for this client and the secret is the password. And when they're used to make HTTP requests, they're combined into an auth string, which is this string down here. So that's base64 encoded key plus colon plus secret. And if you've got those two things, you can use that to send statements. And that's pretty much all there is to it.